I want to talk about something we haven't talked about yet, but that gets often lumped in the category of addiction, which is exercise. Um, so maybe let's start with the brain chemistry of, of exercise. I think people have heard the term endorphins, but what exactly is an endorphin? Is that sort of a, a, a an irrelevant uh, topic here? And is it does this really boil down to dopamine again? I would say yes and yes. So endorphin is an endogenous opioid. We make our own opioids. Thank God we do. Um, otherwise, we wouldn't be able to cope with physical pain. Exercise is actually immediately toxic to cells. Strange. Why would something that is toxic to cells be ultimately healthy for us? And the evidence is overwhelming that uh, exercise in moderation uh, depending upon that person's fitness level, um, is is healthy. Essentially, what's happening is that as the body senses injury, we upregulate production of our own feel-good neurotransmitters, like dopamine, but also serotonin, norepinephrine, endogenous opioids. That's the runner's high. If you look back at this metaphor of the pleasure-pain balance, we saw that when we press on the pleasure side, the gremlins of neuroadaptation hop on the pain side as a way to bring us in balance ultimately again the same thing happens with painful stimuli when we do things intentionally that are physically or mentally challenging for us our body senses injury upregulates feel good neurotransmitters and those gremlins actually go over and hop on the pleasure side so we get our dopamine indirectly by paying for it up front and you see this for example with studies that have looked at ice cold water immersion mm. noting that Dopamine levels gra rise gradually over the latter half of the immersive ice cold water bath. And then interestingly, those dopamine levels and serotonin and norepinephrine stay elevated for hours afterwards before going back down to the baseline levels of dopamine firing, which is amazing because what that says is we never go into that dopamine deficit state. We get our dopamine indirectly by paying for it up front. And that process is relatively more immune to the problem of addiction because we had to work first to get it. Um, whereas intoxicants cause that sudden upward spike of dopamine followed by dopamine free fall, that dopamine deficit state, that state of craving before going back to the, the level position. Now, are there certain personalities that can get addicted to exercise? Absolutely. Um, we do see this in clinical care. And I think we also see it, you know, again, just in our culture. We've also drugified exercise, made it more potent, made it possible to do it in more extreme conditions. Um, we've social media-fied it so that now people are comparing themselves not just to their immediate neighbor, but to people all over the world. We've quantified it down to the nth degree. We're constantly measuring ourselves, our heartbeats, our breathing, our sleep. Um, many people actually get kind of addicted to those numbers or quantifications. Now they're pursuing a certain numerical outcome. Dopamine is probably ultimately quite sensitive to numerification. Um, and when we intervene for an exercise addiction, we intervene similar to the way that we intervene for other addictions. We ask people to abstain from that particular exercise for a period of time, try to reset reward pathways. And then when they go back to using, using in a way that's not harmful or self or other destructive.